Good morning, family. How's everybody this morning? Who's ready to praise God this morning? Hallelujah.
ever come Whatever comes my way I will lift you up Giving you my praise And I will never stop You surrounded me Your love overflows I will lift your name Everywhere I go Everywhere I go I will lift your name up In all I do I will give you praise Everywhere I go I will lift your name up I lift your name up in this place. You're awesome in our lives. And Father, we just thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice. Oh, we will rejoice and be glad in it, Jesus. And we just thank you for it right now. Right now. Increase of your presence. Increase of your power. Come and invade our meeting right now in Jesus' name. You are welcome here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In your awesome and powerful name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, please go and say hello to someone. Praise God. We'll be back in a few moments. Seats will make a start. Praise the Lord. Excellent. Okay, if you're here new for the first time or you're visiting us, we'd just like to welcome you here to Rayma Family Church. God bless you, family. Praise the Lord. Excellent, excellent, excellent to have you with us. Praise God. All right, we'll just uh, run through our birthdays. We've got a birthday on Friday. We've got Jacob King. Jacob, not here yet. He'll be here shortly, hopefully. So he's on Friday. So happy birthday to Jacob. And also we've got um, Benjamin Moses on Saturday. Benjamin Moses on Saturday. So happy birthday. One or two. And we have one today. Who is Nathan Keane. Happy birthday, Nathan. Does anyone have any mints or anything we could give them? We'll arrange a chocolate bar for you, pal. Don't even sweat it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So happy birthday, Nathan. I'm going to write that down on there. Excellent. All right. All right. Notices for this week. Prayer meetings. Yeah. Back on. Praise the Lord. All right. So we had one this morning at 9 a.m. So the uh, 9 a.m. prayer meetings and also 6.30 in the morning on a Tuesday. So come in and pray. Praise the Lord. So 6.30 to 7.30 on a Tuesday morning. Come and pray. It's going to be awesome. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, we have a youth notice. Letitia. Hey, here we go. So we have youth on Friday at Auntie's house. We're having Insight Night at 6 p.m. Yeah. Uh, bring snacks, bring friends. 11, wait, what age is it? 11 to 18. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Awesome, eh? Praise the Lord. All right, we also got Potter Home happening today at 2 p.m. 2 p.m.? Yes, 2 o'clock at Potter Home. So if you want to be part of that, uh, please go and see the team. 
Praise the Lord. It's, uh, it's an excellent opportunity to get up there in the community and preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. All right, we've got our focus on marriage in term three, which I'm really super looking forward to. All right, so these are for um, uh, we're our focusing on marriages. Um, and so we want to input next term. And so married couples there is $20 and also singles is $10. Um, uh, and so the, the reason behind the fees is we want to bless all the speakers that are coming in. We've got um, a pastors and teachers of the word coming in, uh, different ones on every Wednesday so far. And so uh, they're going to come in and input into our marriages. Um, and uh, praise the Lord. If you think you're, if you're sitting here and thinking, no, no, my marriage is just fine and dandy, then you out of everybody push should probably be part of this um, uh, focus on marriage thing because um, we'll have to ask your, uh, your, your spouse as to whether it's the same story or not. Um, and so let's get down here, focus on marriage. And also we're opening it up to singles as well. So if um, you're in here and you think, oh, I'm going to be married at some stage, my future husband or wife is still out there somewhere, then that's for you as well. So you can come in and pick up some uh, keys of what a godly, successful marriage looks like. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's, uh, that's coming up real fast. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to bring my wife up here for, uh, just for, for a moment. Uh, last week, if you're not aware of this, we've just finished our ICFM uh, conference. And um, there were so many people that were involved in making this happen. Um, it's been unbelievable. Um, uh, first and foremost... Um, I just wanted to thank my wife, Naomi, Pastor Naomi, sure, uh, for being the, the coordinator. There was, some, there was some hard yards put in there behind the scenes. And uh, also her two IC, Ronnie, she was uh, absolutely detrimental. Um, and, and we've never... We've never run an ICFM before. We've, run, we've done a few conferences and that, um, but uh, now we've got to see what the, the magnitude of, of what the organization of, of such an event um, was like. And these, these guys pretty much carried the brunt of it, which has uh, been amazing. Um, but there were so many people that were involved. And I just want to, I just want to, um, this is dangerous ground here because I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, but we, we had a renovations team come in, and, and this, we, didn't, we didn't pay these guys. These guys came in here, and they uh, worked their butts off in the, in, in the toilets there, making the toilets look absolutely amazing. Um, and so the renovations team were, were part of that. And we even had a comment where uh, even the toilets ministered to someone. Praise the Lord. Uh, also, the ushers team, the diligence in the car parking, um, the greeters at the door, um, uh, uh, ushers under under my um, uh, my, my father-in-law, Mr. M. Uh, uh, just even even with vacuuming and that kind of thing, it's just been amazing. The cleaners, um, uh, diligence in the cleaning. Uh, the seats were absolutely spotless. They tirelessly worked on the seats, whether people realised them or not. Two weeks running, uh, coming in and, and cleaning them. Uh, we thank you guys for that. Uh, the worship team, you guys came at the conference at another level. We've never seen our worship team just come and uh, uh, you guys came in at another level. You guys were well presented and you were flexible. You didn't get into attitudes when, when things changed. You had, they had a three-song bracket prepared for the morning and Pastor Colin says, nope, we're having one. Okay. One, two, three, four. And it wasn't even worship, it was the national anthem. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a national anthem, and so our, our team really uh, really put it on. Yeah. Uh, the morning teas under Anna. Wow. Um, I, f I found out that um, there were some homemade biscuits uh, made for during the registration time, and I went up to Anna uh, beforehand and uh, afterwards, and I said, oh, I'm gravely disappointed with the morning teas because I missed out on getting one. <laughs> <laughs> So she uh, she really turned it up there, and it's been awesome. And the team, and the, team the team, you guys were great. Uh, uh, also, Robert and Betty yeah. for personally looking after the McDonalds. Yeah. For for a main speaker to say that he felt like a millionaire, being uh, being uh, looked after like a, a million or a billionaire, is is that that speaks volumes. Um, the supper team under Heather. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Um, 
Also, we had uh, Roseanne Coordination. Roseanne, you have that with the coordination? Over, over here. Praise the Lord. Um, and also, we had the prayer teams. We had Pastor Peter, um, Ray and Roseanne, and Pastor Naomi looking after the prayer and the, the pre-service. Uh, also, the groundsman, Mr. Barclay, came and did some work on the grounds, and so did Murray. Murray down here did all the, all the bark and all that kind of stuff up, up here. And Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palm, Mr. P, you guys did an awesome job, and also our media team. Yeah. You guys uh, uh, put put things together. I just want to read this to you guys. Okay. Just want to read this to you guys. This comes from uh, Second uh, First Kings and ten. It says, "Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels that bore spices, with much gold and precious stones. She was flaunting." going, this is, this is who I am. I'm the queen of Sheba. Very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke to him all about that which was in her heart. And so Solomon answered her questions, and there was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on the tables, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters in their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. Where, however, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told, told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God and delight, who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord has loved Israel forever. Therefore, and made you king and do justice and righteousness. Now, one thing I want to get clear is that I'm not Solomon, King Solomon, in this uh, in this uh, in this passage way at all. Uh, but the 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 way that the the servants served, the way that the waiters waited, the way that the cleaners cleaned, you ministered to the people of God, and it was very clear to everybody that it wasn't you weren't serving unto man, but you were serving unto the Lord. And uh, what was awesome about that is that Pastor Dominic Danell made this comment. He says, it was easy to get into the anointing of God. And I, I completely agreed with what everybody put into the, into the ICFM. What we put in here, we, re, we reaped a, a, a harvest from it. It was easy for the, the, the anointing and the miracles to flow. He said, numerous nights. I have a hundred miracles in there. And I think it was because of what people had prepared beforehand. There was some preparation time that went into it beforehand. And the anointing of the Lord was free to flow. And there were people here, uh, uh, to me it seemed like all the stumbling blocks and the obstacles were removed. Because if the food wasn't good enough, you know, some people will have a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Or if the toilets weren't cleaned enough, they, there was something that kind of lingers in the back of their mind a little bit. But because of the way that people had invested into the body and invested into this conference, there was miracles that happened during that week. And so I just want to thank my brothers and my sisters, my, the, the, the people in this church here. You guys have done us proud. You exceeded our expectations immensely. And do you know what? I, I knew from the beginning. I said, my guys can handle this. Right from the beginning. It just came out of, out of my mouth during the, uh, the AGM last year. It was quite interesting. We were talking about where's it going to go next? And Pastor Stephen says, well, I can come to me again and unless Whangarei wanted to kind of take it on. And I said, my guys can handle this. Were the words that came out of, my, out of my mouth. My guys can handle this. And you know what? We set the bar real high. And I, in, in my honest opinion, I don't want to brag or anything, but this was the best ICFM yet. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. And you know what? Next year should even be better. <laughs> but praise the Lord, they've got, a, they've got a bar. We've set that bar real high and they've got to beat it. Uh, Pastor Stefan said to me afterwards, he said, um, he said, you know what, my wife's already talking about renovations and, and things they're going to get underway. And he's just like, he's going, we haven't even got back from the last one yet. And so, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. I just want to read this to you from, um, received an email yesterday. And this is, I believe this is for all the church. It says, Dear Barry and Naomi, my heartfelt appreciation and thanks for all the effort both you and your church teams have put into making our ICFM conference such a great success. 
There was an excellent throughout the three days where the moment we arrived at Ramah through to when we left on Thursday evening. Everyone served with uh, great attitudes and excellence. With an, uh, you have an amazing team of people, but of course they follow the example of their pastors. May the Lord's blessing and provision and revelation flow mightily through you and your church family. Love and blessings, Pastor Robin McFarlane. Praise the Lord. So that's excellent. Amen. Um, so tonight we are going to um, we're going to open up the, the pulpit here uh, for people to share testimonies as we do. It's a, it's a great time to debrief. Uh, if you came to the conference and got ministered to or uh, if you, you want to share some some highlights of the conference um, tonight, we're going to open it up. I'm not going to bring a word as such. Um, we're just going to open it up for everyone to come up and share. It's time to debrief. Uh, and it's, uh, I, I love them. I love hearing about what God's doing in people's lives and, and how people got ministered to. And so uh, if you want to come to that, then please come. It's going to be excellent. So that's um, 6 p.m. tonight. On that, I think, Mr. P, you have a notice. Where are you? Here he comes. Morning, church. Um, yeah, I just wanted to come and endorse everything Pastor Barry and Naomi have shared this morning. Um, there is a silent minority that um, have to meet up in the boardroom and we go over the finances and we look over the running of the church on your behalf. And um, one thing I can tell you, we're very blessed to have the pastors we have. And um, for them, my sort of strategy has been, if it ain't broke, why fix it? <laughs> But we're blessed to have pastors that have vision. And Pastor Naomi had the vision of um, doing up those toilets and getting that door in. In my mind, the door wasn't going in, but uh, in her mind it was. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, she won over because um, it was actually a lot of wiring had to be shifted. It was quite a tricky job. Um, Pastor Peter it was away on holiday. It was just seemed too much, but... Um, she could see the uh, she had the vision to do it um, she worked with the contractors to get that toilet going and we just owe her a, a uh, I've got a heart of gratitude on behalf of the trustees for her vision for her fortitude and for working with the constrained budget she did have but actually the budget wasn't that constrained because you guys blessed us with the building fund so I'd just like to say thank you um, on behalf of the um, trustees for your faithful giving um, and I just wanted to say the trustees would like to bless Pastor Naomi and Barry with the weekend away um, so <laughs> we're not taking up an offering uh, we're going to bless them out of um, the funds that are available to them and I'd just like to honour Pastor Barry and Naomi. Thank you. Well done. Um, <clears throat> again, Ronnie's been kind of at the um, the forefront of things. And Ronnie, could I put you on the spot and just ask you to give a bit of feedback on what you've had regarding the conference? Because, um, yeah, Ronnie's had really good feedback on the Caters, caterers we chose the um, yeah and everything just flowed together one thing I'd like to say is thank you Pastor Naomi and Barry for um, initiating our pre-meetings because what I've come to see is um, what happens in here is initiated at pre-meetings and we actually received everything we prayed for and more so um Yeah, um, yeah. Church actually knows what we did. Okay, so in terms of upgrades to the church, we tinted the windows over here so that the sun doesn't, you know, distract people when they're coming through and it just helps with the screen. We put a new door in here so that we can get indoor access to our toilets um, because it, it was really crappy in winter time when everyone used to get damp and wet and slip and slide through the hallway to the toilets and I was over it. <laughs> and I'm going to give um, thanks where thanks is due because I actually, he did win. I was like, okay, I won't, get, I won't do the door. We can't do it. And then Miss Delane said to me, if you don't do it now, it's never happening. 
And then I was like, you're right, we're going to do it. So we just smashed a hole and dealt with it later. It was like, the hole's on there, we have to do it. So that was Mr. Lane. Thank you for pushing me. Thank you for pushing me. <laughs> yeah, I was being a good girl until he came along. <laughs> We carpeted the three rooms out here and painted and painted the back two rooms, which was a, um, all heaps of thanks to North Tech, who actually provided us with students to paint, or else that wouldn't have happened either. So it was just God all the way. And, and in terms of the toilets, we had so much favor. It was just ridiculous. Like there was heaps of issues that keep coming up, which happens when you do building and you're working with the old building. But... God keep providing better options just all the time. Um, I'd bought some flooring that I was not happy with and it didn't actually suit what I was doing and I, was, I asked them if I could swap it and they said, no, no, you can't swap it. And, um, and when my order turned up, it was only less than half, so they had to swap it. And I, <laughs> and I got the one I wanted. <laughs> I was like, it turned up and I was like, this is the one I wanted. And I was like, man, God cares about the details. He cares. He cares about everything. Um, it really worked in our favor, actually. God was right there in it. And I just wanted to, up until the meeting, um, we've kind of been looking after things while Pastor Naomi went north, and then I come out for morning tea to see clay footprints through the church. <laughs> it was kind of like my worst nightmare came, it happened. And so um, I just like to give uh, thanks to Murray because we had a pile of um, bark already out on the um, back, up the back there and Murray barked all around the tree stump where the kids were kind of working up the clay. Um, he's done the whole bank down the back there off Children's Church so the, the uh, clay bank is now all covered and it's a garden and the clay doesn't come down into the, the toilet area there. So thanks Murray for the great job you've been doing. Okay, so we're just going to uh, hear some, some, some feedback that you've received. Feedback. Okay, yeah, so um, people were, were um, quite wrapped with how the whole week went, um, getting feedback on, you know, this is the best we've ever been to. We had decent food. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the feedback I was getting. Um, um, I, th I think we should really send a letter to the caterers, Absolute Catering, and thank them for their, f yeah. their wonderful presentation of food. And we had more than enough, didn't we? We had more than enough food. Um, um, just everything, the trustees, the ICFM trustees were, you know, they were, they were um, blown away by, by the presentation of our church, um, our morning teas, our suppers. Um, we, j we knew it was Going, we were going to get those blessings from them. Mm. Yeah, just we had to. It was so awesome. And I think, yeah, just good feedback. Yeah, the toilets, the toilets were a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was we had really good feedback from it. So very good. So it's amazing when you put on a spirit of excellence in serving, what happens spiritually. When people kind of, all those obstacles are removed and they just want to focus in on God, it's, it's powerful. Even when we left here late at night times, we walked past here and we've never seen our chairs so straight. After, e after each conference, all of them were just perfectly lined up. Everything was beautifully clean. It's, it's little things, but they make a huge difference. Praise the Lord. All right, I just, uh, it's time for our tithes and offerings. I'm just going to read to you from uh, Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Praise the Lord. And coming at verse 1, Psalm 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Praise the Lord. If you've got your tithes and offerings, we're going to pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to give. You are awesome in this place. And Father, we just thank you right now for uh, uh, prosperity to flourish here in this church. Hallelujah. 
We don't even give just from out of our money. We give of ourselves, Lord. We give our, our, our sacrifices of praise and, and, and servitude here. And Lord God, I thank you that whatever we set our hands to prospers in the name of Jesus. And you meet the desires of our heart. And we thank you for it right now in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Perfect. Thanks, team. That's great. Um, yes, sorry for those that may have missed out on the conference. Um, you haven't missed out because um, the conference is available on a USB stick. Um, oh, online, is it? Okay. But um, Ronnie has a form we can fill out and um, receive that so we can get online and uh, receive oh, $40. Yeah, so if it... Um, You'll be blessed in uh, receiving that and just having it to go over and um, it'll be a blessing to you. So you haven't missed out by any means. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Very good. Let's have the worship team back. Praise the Lord. Uh, King's Kids and Nursery, you guys are released. Dub, dub, dub. You guys are in until after the worship. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's stand together and worship the Lord.
just thank you, Lord God. Father, we lift our hearts up to you. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord God, for every great thing, for every small thing, Father. We stir up, we stir up in our hearts, Lord God. Gratefulness, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for everything, Father. We thank you for the breath in our bodies, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for our health. We thank you, Father, for our children, Lord God. We lift them up to you, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We speak out our gratefulness to you, Lord God. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. We thank You, Lord God, that You are good. You are good. You are very great. You are very great, Lord. We thank You, Father. We stir up our hearts to give You praise. We stir up our hearts to be thankful, Lord God. We thank You, Father. We fill ourselves with Your presence, with Your goodness, with Your mercy, with Your faithfulness, Lord God. We thank You, Lord God. We praise You, Father. You are worthy of every word. You are worthy of every action, Lord God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We praise You, Lord God. We praise You, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy of all our praise. I praise You, my God. I praise You, my God. I thank You, Father. I thank You, Lord God. I thank You for this congregation, Lord God. I lift them up to You, Father. They are Yours. These are Your people. We praise You for the goodness You've put in them, Lord God. We thank You, Father, for their faithfulness, Lord God, that they look like You, Lord God. We praise You for that. We thank You, Dad. We thank You, Daddy, that You are so, 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 so good. You're so good. You're so good, Lord. We stir up our spirits, Father. We stir up our spirits, Lord God. You're awesome in this place. There is none like You. There is none like You, Father. We thank You, Lord God. From our very inner being, we thank You, Lord God. We thank You, Lord God. Thank You, Father. There is none like You. There is none like You. We praise You. We worship You. We glorify You, Lord God. Great is Your mercy. Thank You, Lord God. Praise Your Name, Lord Jesus. Praise Your Name. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Lord God. We worship You. Thank You, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. Father, we just thank You for this time together, Lord. We thank You as we break open the bread of life. We thank You for this opportunity to minister again to Your precious sheep. Father, we thank You that we hear You this morning. Let our eyes be open. Let our ears be attentive. Let them incline them to Your sayings, Father. And we thank You for a change to our lives. We don't want to go back to before I see him, Lord. We don't want to put our hand to the plow and turn back. We're moving forward. We want to go up a level. We want to go from strength to strength. We want to go from one level of glory to another level. Thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless your family. Awesome. Just while you're all being seated, I just want to encourage you to come tonight. Because what I was doing before in, in speaking out God's goodness, that's not the only way that we praise Him. We praise Him with our testimony. And nights like tonight is a great night to worship God with our testimony and to stir one another up in our spirit, man. So I'm saying, come come expecting. Don't just come thinking, oh, it's a night off church or we can just chill out and listen to other people talk. Come with hearts expectant. You know, just as we do when we sit... 
before, you know, pastors like Don, Pastor Don, we should come tonight and expect to receive something from stirring one, up, one another up. The scripture says, you know, that God actually remembers when we sit together and talk about him. He actually records it. He records who was there and what they were saying. So tonight is one of those times we get to sit together and stir each other up and stir our spirit mans up to, to move forward and to, and to what, I, what I really think is, is we need to go through a form of repentance, you know, where we turn from things like being spiritually comatose to, <laughs> to, to turning away from that and breaking out of it. It's going to take a lot of effort and repentance on our issue to break some of those, those bonds. So, yeah. So come ready tonight, ready to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Excellent. WWW, I'll release you guys now. My kids are itching to get out of here. <laughs> That's great. Love children's ministry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I remember this time last week saying to somebody that this time next week it'll all be over with. And here we are. <laughs> praise the Lord. Excellent. All right. Uh, so I, I believe this is just a one-off, um, but I really felt it, it, it is quite appropriate. It's good to me and good to the Holy Spirit. Um, it's quite interesting. The title of this uh, message uh, is called Ahika. Ahika. A-H-I-K-A. Ahika. And basically it means to keep the fires burning. Keep the fires burning. I just want to give it to you. This is from the uh, Te Reo Māori uh, Dictionary, what ahika means. It's a noun. It's burning fires of occupation. Burning fires of occupation. Continuous occupation. Titled to a land through occupation by a group, generally over a long period of time. The group is able, through the use of whakapapa, to trace back to primary ancestors who lived on the land they held influence over the land through their military strength and defended it successfully against challenges, therefore keeping the fires burning. And so uh, what would happen is if uh, uh, an opposing tribe or a people would come and they would see fires being, there was a fire being lit and it was, was, was burning, it was a message or a signal to others that this land was occupied. This, was, uh, uh, this land was under occupation. And so if, they, if you were able to successfully keep them burning all day, all night, all day, all night, you have obviously a shift. Uh, that means you were sending a message that you were well-resourced and we have the means uh, and resources to successfully defend this land. And so how this ties into uh, uh, what's just uh, happened in our church here is, is ICFM. Now, this, if you weren't here at ICFM, that's okay. This still applies uh, when the Word of Lord enters into your heart. Um, but ICFM, especially for um, a number of us here sitting under the Word, uh, your faith has increased. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so we're, we're under uh, the Word for um, uh, the majority of the day. Three sessions. Uh, you would have had an increase in desire. Your desire has incre increased. You've been around like-minded people. Isn't that good? Isn't it awesome sitting, sh rubbing shoulders with people of your own tribe? I remember uh, one time I went to uh, a youth pastors conference with people not from our own tribe. Where um, when people talk about churches and that kind of thing, we're, we're all kind of different flavors of ice cream, and not everybody's going to like chocolate ice cream. Some might like. <laughs> Some people might like, I can't stand hokey pokey. My whole family loves hokey pokey. And uh, I'm just, mm, uh, but hands up, uh, hands up here, who's kind of opened up a, a, a tub of Neapolitan ice cream and only one of the flavors has been attacked? <laughs> so we're all different flavors of ice cream. Um, but we went along to uh, this youth, youth pastors uh, meeting down in um, Mount Monganui. A long, many years ago we were still youth pastors at that stage and uh, I got up to share what was happening in, in our church and I said I'm from Rama Family Church Whangarei and there was a man sitting in there and his ears immediately pricked up and he came and spoke to me afterwards and we connected and bonded like that 
And what I found out was that this man, uh, his name was Danny, came from Rama, Scotland. He's from Rama, Scotland. We knew all the same people. Our same, our same. We were like-minded, from the same tribe. And uh, it was as he was just a family member. I was just catching up with a long kind of lost a family member. We were, we were the same. Powerful man. And so being around like-minded people, our desire for the things of God increases. Uh, we're inspired. We get around um, the, the trustees and, and around Don McDonnell. Who enjoyed Pastor Don McDonnell here? Man, wasn't he good? So good. And so what happens after ICFM is that we come out elevated. We're elevated. We've gone up to another level. And, uh, uh, but the issue, here's, here's where the issue comes from, is that ICFM comes and then ICFM goes. So what do we do now? I like what uh, Uncle Richie was sharing with me this morning. He said he came away from after Thursday night, sat, got home and says, well, what now? How can I, basically, in, in, in essence, he was saying, how can I keep this fire burning? So Matthew 24 and verse, uh, verse 12, just write this down. I'll read it to you from a, a, a couple of translations here. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse 12. Because what, hap- what, what happens once, once I see him finishes and we get back to, to normal life? I mean, we're, we've, got works. we've got work tomorrow morning, some of us. We're back to work. We're back to normal life. We're back to the grind. Matthew 24 and verse 12 reads this. This is from the New King James Version. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Will grow cold. Cools off. Things cool off. Here's a, another translation. Um, Iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Old King James, shall wax cold. Here's another translation. There will be such an increase of sin and lawlessness that those whose hearts once burned with passion for God and others will grow cold. See, we can, we can have, uh, go through a season or we can experience an experience where our, our hearts and our desires and the passion for the things of God and for other people are, are burning within us burn within our chests we love God we love other things but what happens when we're back to the grind how do we keep that keep ahika how can we keep the fires burning and so uh, what we find is that you know things can grow cold due to the environment outer influences external influences you know you're back to people that aren't of the same mind in fact they aren't some of them aren't, don't even know God. They aren't saved. We're uh, around other influences. And it's easy to be influenced um, by things and by people around us. But it's not useful if we want to hold on to the flame that's burning in our hearts. I like what Pastor Colin uh, mentioned in First Timothy, or Second Timothy 1, which says, stir up the gift of God that's within you. Some other translations say, fan the flame or blow on the embers. We all need to come to a place where this is something that we need to kind of fight for or put effort towards in keeping. So how are we going to keep the flame burning within our hearts? All right, so I'm going to come through a couple of points so far. So number one is keep your heart. Keep your heart. And if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. We'll come in at verse 20. If you need a Bible, there are some down the back there. Proverbs 4 and verse 20. If anybody needs one, we've got some down the back there. Just place your hand up. You can borrow one of ours. So Proverbs 4 and verse 20. Keep your heart. Right, let's have a look at verse 20. It says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Give attention to my, to, to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Now that word incline in the Hebrew in which it was originally written in is the word norta, norto, which is N-A-T-A-H, Hebrew. And it means to stretch out or to spread out, to stretch forth. Okay, so you're, you're turning aside to, you're stretching towards, you're inclining your ear to my sayings, you're stretching towards, you're turning aside to, you're giving attention to. Giving your attention. And attention is uh, in short supply these days. People's attention spans. 
And so it requires some sort of discipline. And the problem that many believers have and many of us have is that we incline our ears to other things. We stretch forth or spread out to other voices, whether it be negative voices or negativity. Uh, you might stretch, your, uh, stretch out or incline your ear to the news or the media. The news and media are, are full of fear, doubt, and unbelief. And if you don't miss the news every six o'clock, on channel 1 or channel 3 you're inclining your ear to their sayings you're stretching forward you're turning aside to what they have to say and so we gravitate therefore end up gravitating to fear, doubt and unbelief and we hear it by what people you can hear it by what people are saying in their voices and how they're saying things oh man it's covid it's going to get everybody. No one is immune. And you can just hear it by, by the things they say, even passing comments. Obviously, they've inclined their ears to another voice. Because if they incline their ears to what God says about stuff, there is no pestilences or plagues coming near this, near this dwelling. I met up with another believer uh, on Saturday. No, it must have been Friday. Met up with a believer on Friday. Just got the uh, the vaccination jab, and he said he, he he's suffering from a pinched nerve, and he thinks that they might be related. And he says, "What about you? Are you getting it?" I said, "I'm not getting it. I'm not getting the, I'm not getting the, the vaccination." He goes, you, you, "I don't need to get it." I remember uh, heading off to India. With Pastor Colin, Pastor Colin says, you know, a number of people, he, he's trying to say it as non judgmental as he could. <laughs> he's great. He goes, you know, some, if you need to go and get the shots, you probably should organize that. And he goes, but, you know, I, said, I, I don't know, straight off the cuff, even though I was a, quite a young Christian at the time, I said, no, I'm, I'm not getting any shots. Going to India. And I mean, many, pre- many preachers say, look, if you've been to India, if you go to India, you can go anywhere. And it's like, but you don't drink the water there. You just have to be wise and that kind of thing. Um, check check your bottles. Make sure that, that the bottle cap is not broken in that. But even so, if, even if you accidentally drink it, you should have enough faith in, in, the, in the Great Commission to say you can drink poison and it won't come, bring you any harm. Even if you're out there in the mission fields, you know people will test you. People will put poison in your drinks to say, hey, are you really are a man of God or not? It's just the way some people are. You have to kind of accept that. Anyways, we don't gravitate to fear, doubt, and unbelief. And so uh, what's awesome about the, the people that came to ICFM, or even people that come to church regularly, is that you're inclining your ears to the Word of God. You're inclining your ears to the Word of God. You make the effort to get here into church. You get made the effort to get here to ICFM. Even if you served, you're stretching out forth to the Word of God. You're inclining or turning aside to having the Word of God and being inputted into your life amen and so praise the lord that's an awesome thing this week your ears were inclined to the preaching of the word of god and man did we have some awesome word being pumped in here man that was just massive obviously it must be a thing to send the rookie out first <laughs> break break the ice break the ice Pastor Colin, Pastor Colin, he uh, is kind of known that he likes going last. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where he goes. And so, you know, you kind of don't want to mess with that. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the awesome thing about going first is that once you kind of go first, you, you can sit back and enjoy the rest of the, uh, yeah. the, the conference. It's like, well, there we go. And even if you make a mess of things, the others can fix it up. <laughs> so it was good. All right, so my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So we're inclining our ears to the word of God. Verse 21, it says, Do not let them depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart. Now we're talking about keeping the fires burning. Keeping the fires burning. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Your eyes are a gateway to your heart. That word keep in the Hebrew is the word shawmore, which means to hedge about 
Guard, protect, observe. To hedge about, guard, protect, observe. To keep, tend, watch over, retain. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them. You're guarding them in the midst of your heart. In the parable of the sower, uh, one of the most famous parables in the word, Jesus says this to his disciples. Look, if you don't get this one, you ain't going to get any of the other ones. He, he, was, he was bewildered by their um, um, dullness. <laughs> because you've got to get this one. But in the parable of the sower, it says, Satan comes immediately to steal that which was sown in their hearts. And immediately we can kind of think, well, that's just the hard-hearted people. That's just the hard-hearted people. But uh, uh, I think sometimes we can be hard-hearted in certain areas of the word. When you hear prosperity, oh, yes, praise God. When you hear uh, the blessings of the Lord come upon my life, oh, yes, praise Jesus. Uh, forgiving people that offense you. Oh, hang on a minute. But you, <laughs> you don't understand, Pastor, what this person has done to me. And because of that hardness in that area, Satan will come immediately to steal that which was sown in your heart. Therefore, keep it, guard it, protect it, keep the fires burning to show that this is occupied land. You can't have what I have, Satan. Satan comes immediately to steal, to take that which was sown in our hearts. I used to love this game uh, when I was a, a, at youth. It used to be called Storm the Heights. Now, Storm the Heights is kind of similar to Capture the Flag. And basically, um, there is a safe zone that you are protecting, and there's a flag in there that, that no one is going to get. But the, to win the game, you have to go over into enemy territory to steal their flag. And the way that you engage somebody is that you... You've got a piece of string tied around your wrist. You know, one team might have green string and another team might have yellow string. And so if you see that they're an opposing color, then you've got to wrestle them to the ground and rip the string. And that's how you kill somebody. You take away their life. And in order for you to get back in the game, you have to go to the hospital, which is just somebody sitting at a desk tying more strings around people's wrists. So once you get your, your string back on, then you're able to, to go in and, 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 and play the game again. Now, uh, I, we used to play with these um, with Teora Ho down in Wellington, uh, and there was this guy. His name was Wookie. He, he had a family. Uh, he was he was he was the youth leader of youth leaders in my eyes. He, this this guy was he was the man as far as youth leading goes. He made me want to be a youth leader. He like uh, even though the rules were that we all had to go to bed by seven, he'd wake us all up and sneak us out like at midnight, and would from Wellington would drive up to Palmerston North just because. <laughs> <laughs> And so, um, like, you know, we were, we were sneaking behind cows. Come on, Bessie. Come on, Bessie. Like, there were, there were youth leaders patrolling the area, and we were sneaking out. Looking back now, I'm pretty sure you orchestrated the whole thing. But, um. but anyway, he, he grabs the flag, and he comes barreling down this hill, and these two girls try to come up and tackle him. I don't know what the girls were thinking. Maybe they thought he was an, he's an adult. He's going to just fall over and let us have the, um, have the flag anyway. But he, Jonah Lomu'd over both of them. Just went, boff! And one girl goes, what? Another girl comes up, boff! What? And like, he, he was laughing about it afterwards. He goes, man, did you see me smash those girls? <laughs> but a, a clear strategy that we figured out as we were engaging in this game is that we needed to have somebody, a like, good defensive strategy. We needed to have somebody who was able to keep that flag where it's meant to be. And so we'd split the team in half. Half of you guys are on defense, and the other half can, can go and attack to, to engage. And the, the defensive team did everything they could to keep that flag where it was meant to be. And so when we're talking about keep them in the midst of your heart, you are, it has to be a fortress in here to hold on to that word. If you were moved this week by what you heard, if there is something that, that changed in your life, you will have to keep it, otherwise Satan will come immediately to take that which was sown in your hearts. You have to defend it, protect it, guard it. I remember one time Creflo Dollar came here to New Zealand. We went down to see him. And um, man, he was awesome. 
So anyway, he comes off, he comes off down, down there to, to be with the people. He was surrounded by ushers. He had like an ushers team that were like a security team, probably maybe a meter around him. Impenetrable. <laughs> they were guarding, they were protecting Creflo Dollar. And so in the same way, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them, guard them in the midst. Observe them in the midst of your heart. You need to hold on to that word. Because you know what? There will be an attempt to snuff out the flame that is within you. Get back to the grind. Get back to around to people that are, 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 that are all in fear, doubt, and unbelief. You need to guard and protect that word that's been signed into your heart amen praise the lord right verse 22 they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh they are life to those that find them and they are health to all their flesh the word in you brings forth life and health praise the lord the word in you has come has to come out somehow so if the word gets signed into your heart I use, always used to say there's two avenues. You can either, it can either come out from out of your heart through your speech or through actions, which is true. But sometimes it manifests as health and life. Oh, man. You know, Pastor Don had a, a, a four-wheel drive, uh, what do they call ATV Raptor land on the back of his neck, crushing five vertebrae, paralyzed from the neck down. He had the word being pumped into his ear with Dr. Yongi Cho and through, through an iPod. Pastor Colin was the same. If you heard his testimony, he, was, um, he began to suffer dizzying spells. Um, he thought he, was, uh, he had to go through, maybe possibly get some MRI scans. But instead of like going through all the processes of, of um, uh, the doctors and, and scans and that kind of thing, he decides to get Kenneth Hagen, start pumping in the word. Why? Because it is health and life health and life we should have a first aid kit here with nothing but an iPod in it <laughs> alright let's, let's administer a first aid <laughs> you could see someone <laughs> in an accident just, what's the first, uh, what are these look, tiny little defibrillators nope play health life health life they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Praise the Lord. Verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence. Is that word keep again? It means the same, it's the same word. Keep or guard your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. He's got some other translations. So above all, guard the affections of your heart for they affect all that you are. Or pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. That's the Passion Translation. Here's the message. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Our heart is where our life is projected from. Our heart is where our life is projected from. Where you are right now, whether you're in a good space or a bad space, is because of what's in your heart. of what's in your heart and we need to keep it folks you could have the best ground right now you could be reaping some 30 some 60 some 100 full return praise God the word goes in there and it's bearing fruit effective immediately you still need to keep it because things like the parable of the sower of the thorny ground can enter in you could have the best heart we, we've seen, seen it with my own eyes people that have such soft hearts easy to receive the word doing awesome in the things of God some things enter in and it begins to affect their decisions and, and they begin to make silly silly choices and then we don't get to see them anymore things enter in alright so keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life verse 24 put away from you deceitful mouth and put a perverse lips far from you let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. So watch your mouth. Your words have power. 
Your words have power. And beware of distractions. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. Praise the Lord. So that's number one. Number one is to keep your heart. So you need to watch the word. You need to guard the word. Guard it that's in your heart and know that it's true. It's quite amazing when you get a revelation in something and then it'll be tested straight away. Is that what you believe? Well, here we go. My God's a good God. He shall provide all my needs. And then a bill. It's quite funny here when bills start turning up in the in the mailbox. <laughs> I remember uh, uh, as a when I began preaching and ministering the word. It was quite interesting when I, I come up with a revelation. It was almost like uh, uh, the Lord allowed me to be tested to see if that's what was in me. So I became real careful about what I started ministering the word on. I was like, I don't know why you get tested in that. It's quite funny. I remember I preached something and, and the Lord, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, he goes, he goes, is that what you believe? Well, let's see about that. <laughs> it's like, oh, here we go. But you have to cling, cling fast to this. Hold fast. This is something that you need to guard in your heart. Like, for instance, if you get a revelation in your heart you know, and you say, you know what? I am the healed. I am the redeemed. Jesus took all my sins and sicknesses and diseases on the cross. I am whole I am well I am life in my bones and in my blood praise God and then you get a bad report the next day would that alter what you believed because it would challenge the word that's been sown in your heart how would you guard that there are things that we have to keep in spite of what the doctors say in spite of what, what other people say, oh man, my, my, my dad, he died from that. Ooh, and we're talking about believers. Trying to sow doubt and unbelief into your heart. You need to keep guard with all diligence. You need to shrug those reports off and say, you know what, in spite of what you say, in spite of what the doctors say, this is what God says. That he took my infirmities, my sicknesses and diseases on the cross and triumphed over them. Now, my Jesus didn't go to the cross for nothing, so then what is this on my body? It's just temporary. It'll have to bow its knees, and you need to guard the word that's sown in your heart. Praise the Lord. So beware of distractions. We need to watch it, what we say. You're, I can't, I, this is becoming more and more, every time I come up with a point like this, watching the words that are saying with your mouth is so important. What Pastor Dom McDonnell was saying here in, in ICFM is that our speech, the, the, the lobe in our brain is, is within the central part of our brain. And whatever we say, our body responds to it. I'm feeling crook today. Well, then your cells start it activates different parts of your brain and some of your cells start to die because you said it. Interesting, when Tom Ingalls was here for ICFM, he says, you know, if you speak to your body that you know, you're going to live and not die, your cells start responding. When I started talking to my body and said, you know what, I'm going to go to 120 unless Jesus comes back before then. 120, well, my cells have to start responding. My cells start looking at each other. Well, boys, it looks like we're in this for the long run. <laughs> but if you accept that, ah, oh, here in New Zealand, the average uh, death rate is about 70 to 80, and you accept that in your heart, then your body will respond to that if that's what you believe and that's what you say. The word speaks very specifically about your words. Your tongue has the power of life and death in them. If you speak life, then it will fruit into life. If you speak death, it will fruit death. And those that love it shall eat its fruit. I don't know about you. I want to speak good fruit, man. I want to speak, man, we are blessed. And my household is blessed. We live long life. We enjoy the goodness of God at our house. 
God, God, God gives us good days. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. And we walk in His delight. And He delights in our prosperity. Man. You know what? It's funny how things happen. And people say to us, well, aren't you lucky? We need to watch what we say. Your words have power. It says in the New Testament, Jesus says this, your words you will be condemned or be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Someone has taken a tally of, of every single word that you're saying. Praise the Lord. Let's leave that one alone. So we need to watch our words. All right, so that's the whole crux of this. You need to watch our words and beware of distractions. And number two, so number one is keep the word in your heart is to keep your heart. Number two is to engage the word. Engage the word. Hands up here who played front row in rugby before. Hey, all right. Hands up here who's played number eight. Anyone here number eight? I think that I'm a, I'm a back, obviously because of my, of my size. I probably wasn't big enough to be in the, in the fours. But I played one game in open side flanker and I loved it. That in the Fords is that's where all the action is, um, but obviously I did spent one game there and they put me back out in the backs again. But to engage the word uh, in rugby, uh, it's quite a it's quite a team it's quite a team effort. You obviously link up uh, the, the the hooker with the props, and then you got the locks in there, and then you got the number eight, and then the two flanks on the side. But to, to engage, especially in rugby, uh, in rugby league, they just kind of have the golden oldies rules where they just kind of stand and link, link like this. But in, in rugby, you have to touch, pause, and engage, I believe. And so it's all controlled. It's touch, pause, is it set, is it set, and then engage, and engage. Number two is to engage the word. Engage the word. We've got to understand that the word was not designed just to be listened to. I like what Pastor Colin was saying this. He says, we only have an anointing to give you information. Information. The word was not designed to just be listened to. Turn, uh, I want to show you something here in Isaiah 55 and verse 11. This is one of my favorite, and it kind of gives me peace, the scripture. The scripture gives me peace. Isaiah 55 and verse 11, and everything that I read in the word, this sustains me. This gives me peace. It gives me a ground to stand on. Isaiah 55 and verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. There was a purpose in what we heard last week. There was a design. There was specifically a reason for it. It's quite awesome how the, uh, uh, most of us in the, in the trustees, our words tied together. There was like a progression right from the beginning to the end. And it's because we're hearing from the same Spirit. And if the Spirit of God is saying something, we should be listening to it, to Him. Sorry, Holy Spirit. The word is designed to be engaged. The word hear, some people listen, but they don't hear. The word hear comes from the word hearken. It requires a response. The word goes in, it requires you to change something. There has to be some sort of change to hear it. And the funny thing is, is that we all hear differently. <laughs> We all hear differently. Sometimes we can hear incorrectly. But the Holy Spirit is, is the teacher and we have to trust that it guides us and also in Isaiah 55, 11, it will accomplish what, that which he sent it. It will accomplish. So if you trust that, you'll hear the right thing. You will hear the right thing. And so um, we all hear differently. Praise the Lord. And, and even though we all might hear correctly, we can hear different things. For instance, if I grab Joel's notes, 
and I grabbed Murray's notes. Are you even taking notes, Murray? You're not even taking notes. <laughs> if I grab my wife's notes, if I grab Joel's notes and my wife's notes, they'll have different things written down in them. There are nobody's notes in here that are two of the same. They're exactly hearing exactly the same things. Hands up here who kind of hears things that I don't say but writes them down anyway. Like it could be from divine inspiration. You go, oh, I like that. And you write down like a side note. Sometimes I even write them in my Bible. I was thinking, oh man, that's really good. And I write, and I write some things because I'm hearing things as the word is being ministered to. And so we're not all hearing the same things. We're all hearing kind of different things. Uh, and they're based on a variety of things. Could be our attention spans, obviously. <laughs> some of us might be thinking, oh man, Pastor Barry's going on for a bit today. I wonder what's for lunch. You could be hearing, so you might be missing out a whole bunch of things. But it could also, the, a, a variable here could also be your gifts or your callings or the way that you're wired or created. You could hear different things in, in what the word is being uh, preached on. I just want to give you an example here. If you turn with me to John 21, let's have a look at John 21. We're almost there, folks. Now this is after Jesus has gone to the cross and he's resurrected again. And he's appeared to a number of disciples. We're coming at verse 7. So John 21 and verse 7. John 21 and verse 7, very good. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, can anyone tell me who, whose disciple that is? John. That's how he wrote about himself. <laughs> I'm the... I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. Don't know about the others. Uh, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. They saw him. On that, so they see, they see Jesus on the, on, the, on the beach there. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, about 200 cubits dragging the net with fish then as soon as they had come to the land they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread and Jesus said to them bring some of the fish that which you have just caught Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land of large fish 153 and although there are many there were so many that the net was not broken and Jesus said to them come and eat breakfast yet none of the disciples dared ask them who are you knowing that it was the Lord Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them and likewise the fish and this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Judah, do you love me more than these? And he said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then he said to them, Well, feed my lambs. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Judah, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then he said to him, Well, attend to my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said, said to him the third time, Do you love me? Then he said to them, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Then he said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. And when you are old, you will stretch out hands, your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. So we can read a passage like that, and there can be a, a series of perspectives that can come from this. Now, one perspective could be that John, the apostle of love, recognized Jesus first. And then people that have this kind of natural inclination or, or uh, this love of God uh, with great mercy and compassion believe that this is the most important part of the message that people should understand. For without love, we are nothing. We need to serve and operate from the love of God platform. And so people immediately who have this kind of natural gifting of love and compassion and mercy on their lives will read this and see, man, that's awesome. That's what I can pull from the scripture. Now here's a pastoral view reading this. Here's a pastoral view. So reading through this passage here, we can see that uh, the pastors have a responsibility to not only feed and tend to the sheep, but they also need to feed the lambs. So if a pastor or, or a person who is running a church, children's church should be one of the 
the most important ministries that a church should have. <laughs> so children's church is hugely important. Now here's a teacher's point of view from reading the scripture. Ah, Peter denied Jesus three times, which created a strong ribonucleic acid pathway in his brain. But Jesus reset that and pulled down the stronghold when he asked him, do you love me three times? People need to know about this. And here's somebody who has a gifting or a, a call of God on their life to be hospitable, hospitality. Jesus cooked and ate a lot of fish. He's, so if he's the author of creation, if he was there from the beginning and he ate a lot of fish, there must be something about fish that must be good for you. Which one is right? They all are. They all are. When, when, the, when God's his word speaks forth, it manifests differently on different people's lives. But they're all right. And they're all accomplished for what she sent it for. The Jews have this awesome saying, and it says the Torah, which is the only the five, first five books of, of the Old Testament, the Torah has 70 faces. You turn it round and round for everything is in it. We could be looking at the same mountain from different sides, but it's the same mountain. It's the same mountain. And however we heard the word last week, we need to engage it. Whatever spoke to you Whatever the Holy Spirit ignited in your heart, you need to somehow, how am I going to not only keep this word burning in my heart, how am I going to engage it somehow? How can I apply this when I hit work tomorrow morning? How do I act on it? How can I apply it to my life today? Man, I love listening to Pastor Don because he's such an evangelist. Man, he's able to just sit there. He, I mean, he ministered the gospel to Pink and didn't even realize it was Pink. Does anyone know who Pink is? Pink is like a famous kind of... And that's just something that he's... That's, that's in his gift. He's able to kind of engage it that way. But how does it go, how does it go for you? How does, it, how does it burn in your heart? What's burning in your heart right now? We're all, we're all sitting here in an elevated state because we've just heard the word being pumped into us all week. What are some things that are, you need to change in your life to engage the word, to act it out, to apply it to your life? So it's not just listening to it. It's not just, you're not just, it's not just a mental thing, mental ascent and think, oh man, that ICFM was good. I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I'm guilty of this, you know, ICFM can come and can, it can go and then we look forward to the next ICFM and it can come and can go but how about change how about man what can I do now to keep this word in the midst of my heart you know sometimes we won't even get to a full revelation of the word until we walk it out I never understood the scripture about when Jesus says, you know, I haven't come to bring peace but a sword. I will turn son against their fathers. I will turn their mothers against their daughters. Even their, their people of their own household will turn against them. I never understood that. Because we would think, oh, Jesus is for families. Jesus loves families and loves, loves being together with families. Then you read a scripture like that. How does that, how does that happen? It wasn't until I drew a line in the sand with my own family. They didn't want me to come to Raymond Family Church at first. Because this is where it became real for me. This is when the rubber meets the road. What are you going to do here? And it wasn't until I drew a line in the sand and he says, you know what, I'm sticking with Jesus. You can do whatever you want. Whether you cut me off, whether you excommunicate me from the Catholic Church on Christmas and Easter, 
<laughs> whatever, whatever it is. It wasn't until I drew a line in the sand where I began to understand that this is a scripture on love. Because you know what? Now my family who don't know Jesus have a chance. They now have hope because somebody has made a decision to pursue him. If I didn't, if I didn't, if I just, okay, okay, I understand what you guys are saying. God must be for families. I'll stop coming here. There was, my family would have no chance. Neither would I. We have to engage the word somehow. Something that resonates on the inside of us. I like what Pastor Robin was saying about the lion's roar, it reverberates. We have this voice to speak truth. How can you take that and apply that tomorrow in your workspace? When everybody's talking about stuff and fear, doubt, and unbelief, and you go, you know what? You can find peace and I know where let your voice reverberate something something that you can do to, to apply it to your life and it needs to be conscious decision you don't kind of just well if it happens then it happens <laughs> if it just comes out then it just comes out make it happen purpose every day you know what I'm going to do something with this word that I've learned every day what can I do I've said, I mentioned this here before, but uh, even out there in the lost, with the, with the lost, when I first became senior pastor here, I was just around the people of God all the time. I was around around the family here. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I believe my my life, uh, the way that the Lord has kind of wired me, is to build the body, build the body of Christ, Amen. and I build build the church like a fortress. <laughs> He had, he's, he's a man to all my life to take people from milk to meat he, he kind of kind of bring people into maturity and to, and to make God's church the glorious church but that doesn't that doesn't neglect the fact that, that I should be just kind of uh, uh, put myself away from the world and live like a hermit and in fact I found myself only being here with the people of God and Accelerate College which is a Christian school I was only around the people of God and I knew there was something missing in my life I needed to be out in the community somehow. I needed to kind of shine a light somewhere at where I'm able to make a difference. And so I put my name down at Carmel High School. And man, that, that's, that's a tough place, man. If you compare them from Accelerate College, the, all these guys here, all, their, their main goals is to get into university and do the best that they can. They, they sing, praise and worship in the mornings. They have a devotion time. They love the Lord. Swearing is like a cardinal sin there. <laughs> then you get to Carmel High School, and every second, every second letter, that, word that comes out of their mouth is an F word, and that's just how they speak. That's how they speak at home. But what hope is there for them if believers live like hermits and disdain themselves from away away from the rest of the world? I love what Patsy Caminetti says. We can't be light bulbs in a light shop for the, our whole entire lives. Light, that's not their design or their purpose. Their design and purpose is that the light bulbs must be taken out of the light shop and stuck it up in a dark place to light up the dark spaces. We're all light bulbs. We're all designed to be around light bulbs. You can't just say, ooh, no, I don't like being around the world. Because what hope is there for them? Even with my own children. You know what? I'm going to keep it together. <laughs> Even with my own children, I had to explain to them why I wasn't going to move them to Accelerate College to be around other believers. Something that we considered because we believe the level of education is probably better there. And, you know, they're going to be around the people of God and that they should be, you know, raised up in the way that they, 
and, and the things of the Lord. But what hope would there be for the primary school, the state primary school, if there weren't believers in there? I said to them, I said, what hope is there for your friends? What hope, what hope is there if there are not little light bulbs in there lighting the way? And so, you know, they're not, they're not like evangelists <laughs> going out there and, you know, on, on, on the playground and that, but even the things that get instilled in them here at, at Children's Church and even the work that my wife and I put into our children, it should resonate somehow amongst the other kids. We've had, uh, we've had a friend of Munna's and a friend of Kaya's come here and they both got born again on the first day that they were here made a di- I know you might think but it made a difference to them you need to apply and engage the word that we've heard in our hearts to keep the fire burning and it has to be guarded but it has to be engaged in order for it to fruit I can see no other way or other reason or purpose for it. So let's just finish uh, uh, in James 22. And then we'll call it a day, James 22. Please come tonight. If you've got, uh, if you were part of ICFM, even if you weren't part of ICFM and you want to catch something, go, man, that's awesome. I want to get something. You can catch something. Like good stuff. So turn me to James. Coming at verse 1 and verse 22. Chapter 1, verse 22. James 1, verse 22. It says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is like a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. Every time I read out of this, I'm showing you what you look like. And you know what the, the interesting thing is about a man looking at his natural face in the mirror is that we don't all look the same. Whatever you hear and whatever goes off in your heart or whatever you're convicted of, I'm showing you what you look like. Powerful, man. We don't all look the same. The way that you respond to the word ignites your heart. And you reflect God to the world. And we're all made differently. In your realms or spheres of influence, you can reflect Him in the way that He's created you. I love the story of creation where God created Adam and He said that, well, it's not good for man to be alone. And so He made him fall asleep and He pulled a rib out and He made woman. And I believe that when the rib was extracted from from Adam all the feminine qualities of God went into Eve so who reflects God now they both do the way Adam reflects the masculine qualities of God Eve reflects the feminine qualities of God and it's like you when you uh, 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 reflect the word of God in your life the way that God has created you you're reflecting his characteristics whether you're a gardener, whether you're an entertainer, whether you're one of the fivefold, you reflect Him. Both different, but all the characteristics of God. So we need to hear the Word and we need to engage it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to to minister your word. And and Father, we thank you for the ears that have heard your message this morning. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that it goes in and goes in deep, that it produces some 30, some 60, some 100 fold return. And we thank you for for the realms of influence tomorrow in Jesus' name. Thank you. We make a difference in somebody's life just by reflecting who you are in our lives, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for your, your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us in the ways that we should go. And Father, we just take this week right now in Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, family. If you need any prayer for anything, uh, I'll be happy to pray with you. Otherwise, we have refreshments next door. Please come tonight and come and share. Be prepared to share uh, what, what happened for you and ICFM. And if, you're, if you were, weren't here, please come along anyway. Praise the Lord. We're going to have an awesome time in God. We'll see you then. Praise God.